let's see how this video looks. Okay? Now, so the three three gentlemen that come in, uh, one, two, or all of them, will be seated on that couch where I just was, and I'll be seated here, and hopefully, I won't be seen, but I'll be able to be heard. When the red light's on, the camera's rolling. All right. Recording as of now? I think so. <laughs> that was over the end. Okay. Well, where do you want to start? My beginning here? I'd love to. Are you beginning anywhere? Well, let's, let's start when I arrived here. I was 12 years old. Okay. <clears throat> My sister and I, Edith, uh -huh. were living in Dallas with my mother. And she married again. And we decided we wanted to go to where our father was. We found out he was here in Port Aranjas as a commercial fisherman. Uh -huh. So my mother put us on a train in Dallas. And we wound up in Aranjas Pass. Speak out just a little bit because that air conditioner came on. Okay. Yep. We wound up in the Ramses Pass. Okay. This old train that was building the refinery in, in, in Ingleside at the time. Uh -huh. And this train stopped there and did a lot of switching. It was a mixed train. Yeah. And uh, while it was stopped there, there was a truck, a freight truck. I looked out there and saw this fellow, and he was waiting on the the train to get out of his way so he could go, so I went out and asked him where he was going. He said, around this pass. I said, well, can I ride with you? That's where I'm going. <laughs> he said, sure. And his name was Gob Robertson. Gob Robertson. That's right. So I got in that, and then he had to ride what was, I always remember, and the floorboard of that old Model T truck was a bunch of sacks of money for the bank in Ramsey's Pass. Had my feet on it. So I asked him what it was, and he told me. <laughs> so we get to Ramsey's Pass, and I wait for my sister. She's on a train, waiting until that old train gets over there. So we get on a, an old jitney then, that old Model T 
truck. Uh-huh. Pulling two flat cars, and behind this old truck that built a kind of a, a place for about six or eight people to sit. So we got out to Harbor Island, and my daddy was a commercial fisherman here at that time. He had a little old one cylinder Hermit engine in his boat, small boat, just bay fishing is all he did. <laughs> So I went with that, went down to get in this boat, and an old man was with him named Jump. I never will forget his name. He told old man Jump, he said, uh, hold it so it won't go aground. And hell, all I knew was the ground was under me, and I jumped out of that damn boat. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we get on across the channel. At that time, the old ferry boat was an old paddle wheel ferry named the Mitzel. And well, we didn't ride that, we rode Papa's boat, the little one boat we got over there. So at that time, all the people that used to come down, the oak as we call them, uh -huh. they'd come down to fish and like it here, and they'd settle here. So Papa done the same thing, and he'd live down what they call Ragtown. He built him a deal down there, a, a shanty or whatever, yeah. and uh, on top of an old wreck. An old, an old barge wrecked in there, just this side of where the government office is now. And there were several people living down there, two brothers named the Jujo and Sam. They were fishermen who fished off the jetty for a living. So, so I started fishing with my daddy. And he, at that time, there was a man named here, here named Jack Haley, had a fish house. And he had a deal with people all over the country the zoos and whatnot to sell them uh, sand trout to feed the, yeah. the animals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you pay two cents a pound for them. Mm. That's all, what you pay for them. But you go up there and two cents a pound, then you catch a 200 pounds of the limit. It wouldn't buy no more. Each, each boat, each commercial fisherman was on a 200 pound limit. So two cents a pound, that's, that's, that's for all of that. That's yeah. four dollars a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we did that, and time goes on, time goes on. And so I guess uh, we fished, well, I fished with my dad, a lot of like, commercial fishing through the winter for two years. Is this on a hook and line? Oh, Lord, yes, the chain is just a damn cane pole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have the, the rod and reel, or a lot of people had, but we didn't. Yeah. So Papa decided he wanted to go back to Oklahoma. Back where he was born, where I was born. And uh, so we get that old Model T and here we take off. Me and my stepmother, half brother and sisters, and Edith. We get up through the country and the Papa started talking about picking cotton. And I said, well, well. I've been exposed to this salt water atmosphere too long and I didn't get to see myself picking no cotton. So I got up there and <laughs> I, I stayed a little while and I, I left. Then I'm about 15 years old. <clears throat> I got on the highway and I flew my way back to Dallas. Found my mother. And it, been, it was a lawyer and and corporate fishing named Ted Sinang. While I was down here, I had, he had got me to go out and just steer his boat while he fished, just him, him and I. He had a, an old Dodge motor in it. I'll never forget the motor. I'd go out there and steer it around. He'd catch kingfish and whatnot. So, and he built the first cottages on this island named the Sinang Cottages. I've heard of it. Well, I know. <laughs> so he told me, he said, now, Woody said uh, you had a house right there where he built the cottage. He said, uh, if you want to, you can live in that house. I was I was I was on my own. Yeah. You can live in that house and, and run the cottages for me and go back to school. Said, okay. So in the meantime I saw Miss Craven, there was an old teacher here then, old J. R. Cravens, your your dad worked for him. Yes sir. Old J. R. Cravens why was a school teacher. And there we get, she'd come by that house where my bedroom was, 
And every morning I get off that old ferry and go bitchy. Come by and peck on my window. Woodrow, you get up now. Time to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went to school and time goes on and time goes on. And Ted and his wife got crossed up and uh, some ink. Ted some ink. Ted yeah, and his wife got he, he, he went amok. He went down the wrong road and his wife quit him. So there I, there I was. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of went a while too, I guess. But at, at that time, his island was pretty, pretty wild, bootlegging and all. So I uh, quit school again <laughs> and uh, started bootlegging. Oh. <laughs> well, this is like a bonus because I didn't know we were going to get that on film. <laughs> yeah, start food legging. So, <laughs> I never Keep talking. I'm just going to check this. Okay, it's there looking was, good. The old man here and there was, 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 was the constable named Gillespie. The old man Gillespie. And he knew that I was <laughs> bootlegging for old Peg Carpenter and <laughs> selling whiskey on the waterfront. So. <laughs> He decided he was going to try to catch me, but he never could. How that so this is about about what year? Oh, and you're what? 18? Had to be about uh, 29, okay. 30. Okay, and you're about how old then? Because I don't know when you're, I, what, when were you born? What's your I was birthday? born in 1950. 1950, what day? What's your October birthday? the 10th. October the 10th, okay. 1950. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, that goes on for a while, and uh, the constable decided he was going to try to catch you. Oh That's yeah, where you were. yeah. yeah. So, so, I had a lookout. One of the coast guard <laughs> was on watch up in the lookout tower there at the coast guard station. Well, he would look out for me, uh -huh. and then he'd, he'd point. Yeah, yeah, which way? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I went down there, and there was. Uh, a couple old cafes there on the flats built upon a little pylon, oh, about, oh, I guess say four, four and a half feet high. Well, that old man lifted there for me, and he'd run around there and try to look around and see where I was, and I finally got where I could get away from, run over to a little fish house out on the water, and drop my jugs overboard. <laughs> I never told this to anybody else. <laughs> so, this you know, tossed out over the water, you know. I just yeah. dropped it in the water, and I went back around over that little fish house. Go back, and he never didn't know where I was. But anyway, time goes on, time goes on, and Sonny Matthews and I were buddies. Uh huh. And Arnold McBride was another one. So we were walking down the street one day, and uh, he, Sonny, came in and said, Woody said, uh, uh, "There's a." Guy tell me about this CC's, Civilian Conservation Corps. He said, What do you think? I said, I don't want to think about it. So we got to talking about it, and I read a little bit about it. Went over to the drugstore, got a paper, and uh, we decided to try it. So <laughs> we went over the corpus to the, where you enlisted or whatever, and of course I didn't have any, any, uh, I said my, uh, you got thirty dollars a month. Yeah. That was your pay. Yeah. And twenty-five of it went to your dependents, and you got five wherever you're gonna be stationed. Goodness. So I had it set where I thought my dad would be. Uh huh. So I, I get on, a, I go to say I go to Robstown, and they put me in charge of two hundred other. Bambino, most of them Latinos, uh -huh. to get up to San Antonio. That was my <laughs> So we get up to San Antonio, get there at the induction center. To the, uh, now, camp. now, is this for the CCC? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we did cross the road. Okay. Cool. okay. So uh, I get them all up there and I got that. I don't give a damn. You never get back because I, <laughs> I got you up here. So we went all through all this, went through the. the uh, Induction center there. And 
during the time there, I wouldn't like to play baseball. Well, I was a pretty good ball player. And I hurt my this hand right here, pitching. I was pitching to hit, hit the ground and go with the frame back. And I just flipped it back like that and got on this train going to New Mexico, San Jose, New Mexico. And that thing started thumping and the throbbing and then so the doctor, old Dr. Rife, was on the train with us. There were 200 of us, 200 boys from South Texas. Yeah. And uh, he looked at it and said, well, in the meantime, I got several fights up there. And I got, and they, and they started calling me Popeye. And that was my name. Popeye. From then on. <laughs> yeah. So he said, Popeye, I said, uh, this train's too rough. I can't do anything right here. So wait till we get where we're going and I'll take care of it. So, Make a long story short, we go on, get out there to get to Albuquerque and some trucks meet us there, take us up in the mountains, out of Albuquerque, 8,000 feet high, nothing to give us a, a, a mattress cover. The sleep on? Huh? The sleep on? Well, yeah, but you fill it with hay first. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, he, the hay's out there, I know there's hay for that purpose. and. Uh, Old Dr. Rife told me, he said, Papa, I set your ass on that bale of hay and, and give me a hand. So he did. And I put my hand out there and he stuck that knife under that fingernail and down I went. <laughs> and I could, I could barely hear him. He told him, boy, I said, all right, set him on his ass, put his head between his knees, he'll come to it in a minute. <laughs> Which I did. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> put us in tents. I'm going I'm to go through a lot of this. That's fine. You, you, you won't pull around as well. That's okay. It's so, your story. So while I'm up there, I was there for about three or four months, and Dr. Uh, uh, what the hell is Captain? Can't think of your name. Now called me up in the orderly room and said, Papa, I said, uh, you're, uh, for your staff, your money set, your $25 a month set keeps coming back. You don't know where they are, do you? I said, well, I've got an uncle who lives in Port Aransas. He said, well, I can do that. So I said, Bill Moore. See, I didn't oh, want my uncle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, give him Bill Moore's address. But Bill, would, well, it, that time, time is hard, man. You, know, you just don't really, can't really believe how hard it was. So I, I, I wrote Bill, told him about the check going to come there, $25. If you need it, use it. If you don't, send me a little of it. So. And that's what happened. Good night. <laughs> well, they must have been harder. You wouldn't have left here to go do oh, that. Oh, it, well, it was hard. Jesus Christ, for my youth, you can't believe it. They were fire, man. But uh, when I I stayed out there, you could do six months, re up for six months. So I stayed those six months, and then I could re up for another one, which I did. and. I told this uh, captain, I can't think of the captain's name now, but it doesn't matter. But anyway, during this time, <laughs> we had two weeks of vacation we could take off from the camp. Right? So me and a boy named Spotty Mike Simmons and another boy from Goliath, we was gonna, I told them all about four we were going to come back here. But we got, one of them could speak good Spanish. So we get to El Paso, we want a freight train. We got once Albuquerque got a freight train to go. So <laughs> got to, uh, to uh, El Paso. El Paso. Uh -huh. And uh, little, little Dudley Rylander, he's the one who speaks Spanish so good. He, uh, we go across the river. Okay. Go across the river over there. Thank you, Long Tour Strong. We had a big time, you know. And I made a deal with, we took, of the money we had, I took it and pinned it in my watch pocket. Yeah. That was going on money. We were going to spend yeah. other, but that was going, we were going to keep that come the rest of the trip. Anyway, we going down the street. This guy comes out of the damn joint. Start taking talk to hey, hey boys, I know I know where's a good place to gamble. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we go in this place. Make a long story short, they <laughs> took our money. <laughs> you 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 let them or they literally took it? They, they, well they 
gambling. Yeah, gambling. Yeah. You, you had to put so much up to this. Yeah. It was a come on. So. Cards or what? Huh? Cards? Dice. Dice, okay. It held about six or eight dice. I never saw the game. Anyway, so we, we, we went broke there. And so I went back. We went back across the bridge. And uh, <laughs> I got a hold of the telephone called Bill Moore right here for the Okay, it's the next difference. I'm going for a ride with the girls. Okay. What? She's going for a ride with, with the girls. With the girls. Oh, She's okay. going for a ride with the girls. We'll that. probably be here when you get back. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even got the four reds yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, Bill sent me 25 bucks. To get and, back. Uh, huh? To get back. Yeah. So we went on back to Alcatraz, Santa Fe, where the camp was. We, I left that stuff. We, we sat on the El Paso side of that damn river for two days waiting for that guy to come across there that put us in that we're going to cut his throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't figure you were just sitting around waiting for the money to show up. Uh, no. So we go on back. Time goes on, time goes on. You can only re up at that time for another one more six months. That's right. Yeah. So I didn't make that out. I came on back and came back to Fort Randis. Let me get this straight now. Take your time. No hurry. Yeah, I came on back and around us. Yeah. And time changed a little bit. The economy got up a little bit then. And Just a little. So I, I started working around the waterfront. Uh-huh. Cleaning, gutting, gilling fish and whatever. And that's when I decided I, I wanted a boat. Yeah. Okay. Boat of my own. Uh-huh. So finally maneuvered around there was a guy named Chick Roberts. Guy in Roberts. Chick Roberts. And uh, he kind of took me in under his wing. And about this time, an old man that he was been taking fishing a long time decided that uh, he uh, chick wanted him to run a rock yacht for him out of Rockport. So chick sold me his boat, on, just on the cut, and uh, it was a Farley boat. I never get a little Chevrolet engine in it. Well, I started fishing with it. By that time, I could old enough to get a license. So you were going out in the Gulf? Uh, that, that one I was just commercial. Oh, commercial, okay. So I, 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 I decided I'd get a license and so I could take the charter parties. Yeah. So I never would get this old man from the, the, the Gallison came down to inspect the ferry. He was at the started. To give me a test. So I went on the on the old Mitsubishi ferry, old paddle wheel ferry. Told him what I wanted. He said, "Well, you just stay on the ferry here, and I'll ask you all the questions." And all this was I did. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. No paddle wheel ferry. Well, that's how I got my license. <laughs> so at that time, I guess it was probably maybe twenty, maybe twenty-five charter books in for around. Barney, Farley, uh, damn, my, my memory's getting bad now. <laughs> when do you think this was? Late 30s? Middle 30s? Or? Well, let's see, uh, about soon after that, I uh, met my future wife. Uh -huh. So I got married and I was 21. It had to be 36. Oh, okay. So I got married 30. Yeah. I got married 31. Okay. And I, I was born 15. So I, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I never forget how I met her. How's that? Well, it was having a big deal on the waterfront down there. And a bunch of girls and here or in the Rand's Pass. 
I want this water from here. Here, okay. They came over here to a dance, it'll be that night. Oh, okay. So at that time, the old ferry landing was right down there, about where, oh, I don't where Matthew's old place used to be, a little, a little east of that. And the ferry came in there, and I was walking up from the ferry landing, and this car came by, and there's two young girls sitting on the rear fenders of it. And as they went by, I saw one of them, and I like, kind of liked her looks. So I'm going to dance with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a man. Just a man. So I did. Better to dance that night. We, we fell in love. A little later, later on, we got married. And, uh, this, this boat that I got from Chick, he had a house, too. I, got, I, I rented the house from him. Well, the, the one that later on belonged to Dennis Dreyer. He's dead now. I think his wife lived there and she went to a restaurant. Anyway, it was just a, just a shotgun house. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you something funny that your people are <laughs> When they got this house, that's an outdoor toilet, and the damn, uh, where you sat in it, yeah. I didn't like it. It was So I put a new board across there, but I had to have holes in it. Yeah. Uh, at this time, one of the decimated ants, well, the rich one, everybody knew who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Dina? Yeah, Dina. 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 Yeah. Dina came down here and she came over to visit us. Oh, no. So while she's in, while she's in this house, I go in and ask, ask me where I want a pie pan. Well, you want a pie pan? I said, I want it. Well, that hole out there in the door. <laughs> and Dina could get over <laughs> So I did that. <laughs> <laughs> she was, you know, I, you, you never knew her, did you? No, I never knew well, her. Well, she was kind of sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you used to make the hole. That's what I used to make the hole, the two hole toilet. <laughs> well, it was nice you were making her a fresh seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's long in that era, not long after that. Jesse May's father was working for Uncle Pipeline across the channel. Right. On Harbor Island. Yeah. So uh, I found out that they were hiring, wanted somebody over to run boats, fishing boat for, for their guests 